So a month ago, I asked you all, what roles do you play? Very few of you say you only play one role. Most of you play two roles, mostly involving DPS in some way. Likely due to the fear of other roles, due to comfort, or due to different definitions of what you count as playing that role. To which, I should have specified my own definition of what I was asking for, so let me do that now. You play a role if you play it at all. Leveling a job to 80 even if just for the Amaro, you play that role. Dungeons are like 90% of the content most of us do anyway, so grinding up is plenty enough to consider you play it. Especially because the journey to level 80 isn't that short. Or 90 come Endwalker. So consider what answer you gave what answer I consider it is, and then consider the following. All three is the answer everyone should aim to give. DPS, healer, and tank. You should play all three. I'm glad so many of you do. The benefits of even just getting one job of that role to level cap can massively improve your abilities for the other roles. Have you ever thought as a tank that things were dying too slow or the healer wasn't using their kit to keep you alive? As a healer thought the tank was taking too much damage or the DPS were avoiding your AoEs? As a DPS thinking the tank needs to stop moving for your DPS purposes or healer not healing you? The causes of these issues and the answers to your questions are extremely enlightening. They will make you a better player within your preferred roles, whether you realize it or not. Knowing how to play a tank and healer, even at the surface level, can massively increase your DPS knowledge. You might not expect this, but there are things you can only really notice when playing that other role and seeing how your allies act. Sometimes you may think the tank is just randomly spinning an enemy or boss, but maybe they're avoiding AoEs you couldn't even see because the boss is so big. Or maybe they are just randomly spinning the boss. You don't know. You're just a DPS too busy with your rotation to know what is actually going on with the tank. Knowing why a tank is moving the way they are, assuming they know how to move themselves to begin with, you can adjust your own movement as a melee DPS to spin the boss as needed or as a range to move to specific positions that you need to be in. Little things like this you can only realize when seeing the other viewpoints, but not everything is as tiny as positionals. Healers have the biggest bits to learn, I would say. Ranged and mage DPS especially need to learn healers. These players are almost always the ones to be super far away from the boss when they shouldn't be. So far, they can't be healed without multiple dedicated single target heals, while the rest of the party didn't need babying. Standing a mile away is not as helpful as you think it is most of the time. There are other cases where it does help, but in general, it's not helpful. Try and get at least close enough to get AoE heals but you'll only really, really get it once you've experienced it for yourself. Experienced healing the entire party up with a single well-placed AoE heal, and then there's this one guy off in the corner sitting at 10% health because they never left that corner for the entire fight and missed every single heal. Now you have to dedicatedly heal them, or they'll die, and yell at you for not getting heals despite it being entirely... 100% their own fault. This is a bit more significant of a thing to learn than just missing a few positionals, isn't it? It goes deeper than this still, but the point is less about listing out all the possible things to learn, all the little things, all the big things, and more about learning by experience. You can watch and read as many guides as you want, but there's always some stuff you can't really learn properly without real experience. Doing something in itself is learning. Even if you are a person to learn better with videos or reading a guide, it's not until you apply that knowledge that you can really say you learned. The real roadblock here though 
is the fact that you all probably avoid the other roles out of fear of some kind of healers have so much responsibility, tanks have so much responsibility, as if DPS don't. People overestimate how much responsibility tanks and healers actually have. Tank leads the group? Aggro is so extremely easy to maintain, and by high levels you have so many cooldowns, you can basically spam them at random and still have some for the next pool. Healers are similar. In all trash packs, you have tons of cooldowns to keep the tank alive and still even fit in some DPS. The fact that the greater community as a whole insists a healer should DPS first, heal second, isn't just some elitist screed or anything like that. It's truly because healing isn't as difficult as people on the outside make it out to be. It can be daunting before you know what's going on as a healer, before you get your feet wet, but once you actually get into it, you start DPSing more than you start healing. Bosses are where any amount of real healing will be needed, and there's always plenty of room to use cooldown heals and other such skills. The issue comes in when people take avoidable damage, which is on them and not you. Sure, you could fail to save them when you otherwise should have been able to save them and should improve yourself to fix that, but the responsibility falls on the DPS who failed to dodge. Which, that's another reason for DPS and tanks to play healers, I suppose. How many times have you unfairly blamed the healer for your own mistakes? That you stood in something easy to avoid and then died because you took another hit after. Maybe that hit avoidable too. But you blame the healer instead for your death. When you're on the receiving end of that for the first time, it clicks just how wrong it is to blame the healer for deaths as much as it might happen. But it's just as easy also to yell at the DPS for their mistakes. They need to keep up uptime on the boss, keeping their rotation up, not stopping their damage, while also still avoiding taking damage. They can't be taking constant hits like the tank might be able to. They can't keep themselves alive like a healer who takes a hit can just heal themselves up in time. The healer needs to watch you, but they're busy dealing with the normal fight rotation and trying to keep the tank alive from tank busters and such. The responsibility of DPS is high damage and to make the lives of the tank and healer easier. The better you do as a DPS, the easier it is on the healer and tank. The higher the DPS output you have, the safer some giant pool is, the safer a boss is, because the faster stuff dies, the less cooldowns, the less danger there is. Arguably, that's the biggest responsibility. You have the biggest bulk of damage and the biggest bulk of minimizing the dangers of anything else the tank and healer might try. And this becomes only more obvious when you go from having high DPS in a party to having lower DPS. Play a healer or a tank and get the slow runs and you see it's not just about the speed of the run, it's about how safe the run is. And on top of all of this, unless you're taking Gunbreaker or Sage, you're starting from level 30 or even lower at level 1. You have easy content to practice in, a very safe environment to get going before you fully realize what all is going on within a role. Then once you've started to get going, the anxiety is already gone because you realize a lot of it is way easier than you ever expected. You can learn stuff for other roles while playing that role you thought was impossible or was too intimidating. You can take it slow, but you really should take the journey. All three roles will benefit you far more than you realize. This is probably the shortest video I will make, potentially ever, but that's how important it is you step out of your comfort zone even a little. You don't need to constantly play them, do difficult trials or even extremes with all roles, but you should make the leap into other roles to at least level them up in dungeons. You may even discover something you never knew you'd enjoy so much 
and end up changing your main role as a result. A new part of yourself and your life in Eorzea. As I said, this was very, very short, but this is a topic that people need to hear. You can start at level 1, slowly get over the anxiety these easier to play than DPS roles are, and improve. Plus, hiding away from the easy roles like tank won't teach you anything and maybe lose you tons of fun as a result. Just because you think you won't like tanking doesn't mean you actually will. I know several people who always thought they would never ever be a tank and end up love tanking now. But take care and may the power of Ananid Hogsley waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon like usual. And an extra extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Eamon El Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cotterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Meowfi, Zella, Scott Stanley, Vala LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. Thank you all for patronizing. The links are down below if you want to patron me, if you want to join my Discord, all that stuff. Thank you for watching and have a good day.